Well, it's a beautiful morning from here in Lagos, Nigeria. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. In fact, it's one of those mornings you just want to snuggle in bed, snooze your alarm, and just sleep on. Yes, it is raining here in Lagos. I'm Kaya Okikyolu. Well, the same is happening here in Abuja, the federal capital territory. It's a beautiful, lovely morning to just get your cup of coffee and be in front of the TV if you can, maybe in bed <laughs> with your duvet still on. <laughs> good morning. I'm Maokwe Ogu Yusuf. Oh, that's right. So let's give you some good TV to go with that coffee or tea or whatever it is you're taking this morning. Now we we'll begin with the latest figures from the NCDC. We've been following these figures ever since it started on February the 27th. And months after, this is where we are right now. The figures are definitely not going down as of yet. We've not gotten to our peak yet. And the NCDC just announced 587 new cases across uh, the Federation uh, just last night and you know you see the total confirmed cases uh, have jumped to 17,735. 14 new deaths uh, were recorded bringing the total to 469. You see 344 new discharges uh, really and the bring, bringing the total number of discharges to just uh, below 6,000. But you know what? The active cases, yes, uh, total confirmed cases is above 17,000, but the active cases as of now is 11,299. NCDC also released the latest figures of testing across states of a federation. And just to give you a sense of the states that have tested the most, you have Lagos leading with 32,899 tests conducted over the course of, you know, COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. And the state with the least number of tests is... Kogi State. Kogi has just four tests conducted. Of course, you might have been following the controversy in Kogi State. But that aside, I mean, there's that battle against COVID-19 on one hand. And there's the talk about the frontliners, especially the doctors, resident doctors, in fact. You, you may have seen the ultimatum, the 14-day ultimatum that the NARD gave the government. And then, of course, the ultimatum elapsed and they went into a strike. It's been a lot of back and forth, really. A lot of meetings with the House of Reps, with the Minister of Health, Minister of Labor. It's been a lot of back and forth. But where we are today is that resident doctors are still on strike. Now, this will worry you any day. But now add the COVID-19 pandemic to it and you realize that this is this is huge, really. This is huge. I mean, I've seen doctors responding to this. Yes, the government has responded. But for the doctors, it's kind of different this time because they're asking for PPEs. They're asking for protection, which is vital at this time, not just for isolation centers, which we know are well covered, but for other doctors across hospitals. They're asking for that. They're asking for uh, uh, their hazard allowances and, and, and the laws backing uh, their operation. They're asking for that too. So it might seem as though simple steps, I mean, simple issues they're asking for, but this has seemed elusive for the past couple of weeks, and it's much of a concern. I was watching uh, you know, a statement from a doctor just yesterday. I mean, they were complaining that, well, you say you might sack us eventually. I mean, hospitals have been asked to open registers, and, and they're saying, well, we're asking for protection. Is it too much to ask for? Whatever the case is, really, we don't need this at this time. We're going to show you what happened across states, but I know Malkwe will want to weigh in on this, definitely. Malkwe. Well, Kaede, it's really heartbreaking to see uh, what is happening. I know that listening to the Minister of uh, Labor and Productivity on Monday in, in an interview that he granted Channel's television on the News at 10, you would have assumed that by today uh, or by yesterday or even the day immediately after he spoke that, you know, uh, the doctors would have seen whatever it was. First and foremost, don't forget that there was a huge controversy on the ha hazard allowance. Uh, the House of Representatives had to wade in uh, to say what is happening with the hazard allowance. As of then, uh, what was approved for the doctors was 5,000 naira. That was the hazard allowance that was paid the doctors because it seemed that the federal government at the time did not think that uh, any, any extra allowances should be approved for medical personnel. But I think that was reviewed and then the federal government promised that they were going to you know, implement a new hazard allowance for the doctors. And they promised that of their own free will until as we speak, this is over two months after the promise was made. The old 
hazard allowance is still what is being paid. Now they have said, okay, we, we're going on strike as a result of this, in addition to a lot of other issues that we have on board, uh, such as the inadequate uh, number of PPEs being provided in the hospitals. And, uh, you know, one cannot fault that. You cannot quarrel with that because I think about it, if I had a child or if I had my partner, my husband, you know, or uh, a loved one of mine were a medical practitioner at this time, my heart would be in my mouth every day thinking, about what that person was going to go through, uh, you know, getting to the hospital. So I don't know if, I'm, if I'll feel safe, you know, to say, look, go to hospital without any personal protective equipment. It is a problem. And I think it's one that the federal government should solve as quickly as they can. On a good day, I mean, everyone who has watched this program for a long time knows that I don't support strike by doctors, not for any reason. Uh, but on this occasion, when their own lives are involved, when we know that a lot of medical practitioners, uh, not just medical practitioners now, but health workers have been affected adversely by this pandemic. Some of them have lost their lives in the process. And in a country where we, we hardly honor our own medical uh, you know, professionals, where uh, you know, it took a while, look at what happened with Stella, Dr. Stella Adadevo, uh, after she gave her life to you know, prevent the spread of Ebola in this country. Country. What did we do? How long did it take us to honor her memory? Uh, and what sort of honor did we give her eventually? People had to fight. There was a debate on the floor of the House of Representatives, you know, pushing a motion that she should be honored. And, you know, that took quite a bit of effort for the federal government to remember. So we haven't quite done anything to make anyone want to sacrifice their lives uh, to save the lives of others in this country. If that is the case, by all means, people will want to preserve their lives by, by themselves. They want to preserve it first. That is the most natural thing to do. So in this era, would you be saying that people should go and be heroes without uh, you know, protective equipment, they are already heroes because they are on the front line by the by the by what they do, by the by the virtue of what they do. I'm sure a lot of parents have been thanking God and their children did not get uh, you know admitted to read medicine at this time because a lot of parents have been very anxious. They are very very anxious about what their uh, you know their children are going through, going to the hospitals. Uh, so at this time, I'm hoping that. You know, the the good promises of the federal government, I know that as a government, they too all have to seem like as if they're firm and they're tough. But can they have, sh can they show that they have actually matched their words with, with action? Uh, and if government machinery is just slow, if, if it's because government machinery is inefficient, that's the reason why the doctors are yet to see it, can they quicken the pace? Can they put pressure on those whom pressure needs to be put on for, for these people to see their allowances? in the accounts one and to ensure that the PPEs which the Minister of Health, I heard him say that, and the Minister of Labor say have been provided to the health facilities are seen in the health facilities. At least let those two be handled. Then we can say that, okay, these two have been handled uh, in good faith you know, the rest of the things that are on your list, because I know that the, the, the demands are about 10. They are still asking for some of their members who were sacked uh, in a controversial uh, circumstance in, at the University of Justice to be reinstated. All those other demands can be negotiated as we go on. But at least those primary two things, uh, hazard allowance, protection for doctors, and uh, I think insurance, medical insurance, this thing should be a no-brainer. I mean, it's the things that people take for granted in other countries. Can anyone really blame the doctors at this time? It's taking one whole week. One whole week. Uh, it's, I think it said negotiations on Monday. This is Thursday. Well, let us hope that before the end of today, we will be hearing some good news on what the situation is with the resident doctors. Skyri. Well, that's right. And don't forget that the majority of doctors uh, that we get to see when we go to hospitals are resident doctors. I mean, aside the consultants and other senior staff. So if we're removing those resident doctors from hospitals, you can imagine what people are going through just to get access uh, to medical help. So let's, let's show you what, what has been going on across the country regarding the strike by resident doctors. I'll be back in a moment. Scanty premises devoid of the usual influx of patients seeking medical attention. That's the impact caused by the resident doctor strike as the absence of doctors begins to take its toll at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lasuth. Although cameras are not allowed in clinical areas, the outlook at various entrances indicates that services are significantly reduced. With middle-level manpower away from work, 
The hospital management depends on principal medical officers and consultants to keep the institution running. What the hospital management has done is to ensure that the consultants as well as the house officers remain in their duty posts to limit the collateral damage that could have happened you know, with this withdrawal of service. The non-implementation of the Medical Residency Act, non-payment of hazard allowances and salaries, as well as shortage of PPEs are some of the reasons for the industrial action. If I had been in a position to advise them, I would definitely have told them that the timing was wrong, no matter what it is that they are uh, agitating for. In neighboring Ekiti State, resident doctors are also observing the strike, leaving the State University Teaching Hospital with those exempted from the action. If we sincerely have very uh, bad patients, we don't have what it takes to take care of them. So that's why we are uh, clamoring for upgrading of the healthcare system so that we can even take good care of them. In North Central Nigeria, Resident doctors at the Joss University Teaching Hospital are fully in compliance with the industrial action. A team goes around the wards to monitor those on duty while enforcing compliance to the directive. An attendance register is used to capture those at work. We've complied with the director of the minister. The registers have been open, but we are yet to get the reports from the various sets of departments. To uh, wake up to the news that um, Strong arm tactics are being deployed on the doctors, I think is truly unfortunate. And I advise the Ministry of Health to retrace his steps. In the absence of resident doctors, nurses and other health workers are assisting medical consultants at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital in Kaduna State in northwest Nigeria. We did not discharge anybody that is not fit to be discharged. We tried to maintain services. The meeting between the federal government and resident doctors is deadlocked for now, leaving room for more concerns about the effect of the action on the health sector. Concerns that can only be addressed when both parties are in agreement. Well, let's see how much of a dailies we can take this morning. And we begin with leadership. Well, let's see what's making a big story on leadership's front page. And you see concerns the APC. NWC disowns Gadam, says Ajimobi remains APC chair. I mean, this has been on for quite some time, and this is the latest twist uh, in that story. But take a look at the writers. Etta to hold forth pending new chairman's resumption. PDP neck to decide on waiver for Baseki this week. That's right. So you wonder how that will play out, especially, you know what? We'll look into that much later, but let's take a look at some other riders. INEC gives political parties 10 days to field candidates for Edo governorship. Well, yesterday it was 10 days. Today, it is now nine days. We're looking forward to the 27th of this month to conduct those primaries. And INEC says we have to get those names by the 29th. So the days are ticking. The time is ticking for political parties in Edo State. I understand about 15 of them have shown interest to participate in this election. So we'll see how that plays out, especially for the APC and the PDP, as well as you know other parties that will be involved in this. But away from that, let's talk security. You see this one, insecurity ministers, security chiefs, Storm Katsina State. Just about two days ago, there was that protest in Katsina about the security situation that has got the attention uh, of ministers and security chiefs as they stormed uh, Katsina. It's quite interesting the way the leadership put that one. And you see NSA engages communities on intelligence gathering. If we could just see that front page uh, briefly. Uh, you see, stop the rhetoric, take decisive action. as uh, coming from... Uh, the Sultan, you see U.S. condemns killings in Nigeria. That story starts on the front page and continues uh, on page 10 of the leadership this morning. I mean, insecurity is a big deal. And we'll also take a look at that during the course of a program this morning. So stay with us. Right under the nameplate of a leadership, see this one for African countries, China to grant debt relief to African countries I mean, in the wake of COVID-19 and uh, dwindling revenue for a lot of countries. You understand why this is a big deal. And the writer says, as PMB seeks global cooperation in COVID-19 fight, 
at virtual summit, that summit held yesterday. And I recall the president, you know, just rallying countries together saying, well, if you've made any scientific headway uh, regarding COVID-19, let's share it. Let's share this. I mean, there's no point of hoarding, you know, this knowledge. Let's help ourselves. And that, that was part of the message the president passed on at that summit, that virtual summit yesterday. But this sad one on the front page, and it, it shook the media world, not just the media world, but Nigeria at large. Uh, media personality Dan Foster is dead. I mean, you can see that story in black on the front page of a leadership. And, you know, uh, it's, it's really hard to sometimes get away to react to stories like this because it just it just hits really hard, really. And our thoughts and prayers are with the family uh, of Dan Foster. Well, right under the big picture on the front page, you see this one. Uh, NMPC targets 40 billion barrels begins exploration in eight uh, Niger local government. And uh, there's an update on the AFDB probe. Pompeo Oyama agree on transparent process. You recall there was meant to be a review of the outcome of the probe that was conducted and we're still waiting for what the review would say. So this is uh, an update, you might say, regarding that uh, Pompeo and Nigeria's minister. Foreign Affairs Oyema agreeing on a transparent process that will be vital, really see how that one uh, plays out. A couple of other stories on the front page of a leadership newspaper this morning. Lightning kills three FRC officials. This one is really uh, bizarre. Uh, as well as some other stories uh, on the front page of uh, the leadership this morning. But let's leave it there for the leadership. Uh, I guess Mark has another one in Abuja. Indeed, Kade, I have with me here Blueprint newspapers. Uh, you see right there on the front page, amidst uncertainty in Edo APC, INEC directs parties to end primaries in 10 days. Well, let us see how the APC handles this one uh, with uh, the confusion it will seem that is currently going on in the party. It says no extension of submission deadline. NWC endorses Ajimobi as acting chair, Gedom Hicks. Is a Yamu's chances still bright? That's according to Shumanis Camp. APC flag brought down in government house Benin. Okay, uh, that should be no surprise. But uh, just to those who are saying within the APC, are they yet to receive the resignation of the governor? So he's signed by word of mouth and so has the deputy as well. So the, the question now is you know, is this still going to be equal part? You know, no. Uh, but look at the Nifty nameplate, that's the, the blueprint nameplate. You see there, Sultan killing the North, fallout of Boko Haram, got thank you. So, it's certainly not a great one. Please get the side of the fact now. Uh, please take away detail. Nigeria loses $48 million to crude to vandalism in six months, as according to the NPC. We're analyzing new COVID-19 drugs, that's according to WHO. And then just uh, beneath the picture you see there of women who are looking uh, like they have been displaced. I'm not able to see precisely where that picture was taken or the circumstances do look like they That's the particular picture. FG concession 10 road target a $166 billion investment just um, at the bottom there, Joe Hesu threatens strike over discriminatory hazard allowance. But that's the reason so right now uh, for the important strike. And then Joe Hesu, which is the uh, about all the other health associations, over discriminatory allowance. Uh, you know, at this matters. Like, put a palm on nation's death, nation's death, and for COVID 19. COVID 19. Pardon me, we seem to be losing your audio there. But uh, let me just pick you from where you, you stopped. You're still talking about the blueprints. Just you know, right at the the, the the right corner of the bottom of that page, the front page of a blueprint, you see that this 
shocking story. I mean, it's coming from Ogun State saying COVID-19 inducing Ogun schoolgirls teenage pregnancies. Uh, that's an official of a state, I believe, making that statement. And it just brings to light, you know, the conversations we've had about sexual violence, rape, and ensuring that these laws are domesticated across states uh, in the country. I mean, you'd hear that the calls to, you know, to, uh, to agencies that are meant to protect people during this period of COVID-19 regarding sexual violence has more than doubled in this period. And I mean, you see this one again coming from Ogun State. So obviously, this is a very much present uh, problem, I should say, and we shall not take our at attention off it just yet. We shall ensure that we do right by the victims and hopefully ensure that other people don't fall victim uh, to this monster. Well, we'll leave it there for the front pages this morning. Well, the rain uh, seems to be slowing down uh, other dailies, but not to worry, we have a whole lineup uh, of issues just to look at for you this morning. So we'll go on a break and when we return, we'll delve into the issues. Join us again. Welcome back and good morning, Nigerians. Well, yes, indeed. What can a brother do? You have to do what you have to do. <laughs> Whatever happens on the road, you just have to pick yourself up and keep going. So, yes, indeed, and uh, good to be here again today. So, let's delve into this right away. We've got uh, Amasajo, former commissioner for information, Adam Awa State. He joins us from our studios in Abuja. And sitting beside him, uh, Alwan Hassan, a member of the APC, so we'll get to see both of them soon to weigh in on this matter because the time is ticking now. They've yes. got nine days, nine days mm. to sort this out. I mean, if you saw the headlines, yeah. that's what Anek has instructed. Yeah, it was 10 days yesterday, now it's nine days. And what we're seeing really, one wonders how fast they can really solve this yeah. and get back on track, especially because you know we have court orders. I mean, court cases. And we don't want a case, well, I'm sure the parties don't want a case where it's just 24 hours to the primaries and another court ruling comes and oh. then it just messes everything up for them. I mean, it gives some, we can give some newsmen headache. Yeah. I mean, you, on the one hand, uh, Mr. Gaydon comes and says, I'm the acting national chairman, brandishing some documents. And then the next minute, then there's another document yeah. saying, no, 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 no. You are not the person. This is the person. So let's get this gentleman to weigh in and help us make sense of some of this. And gentlemen, thank you for joining us today on the program. Let me start with you, Mr. Sajo. From your perspective, who should be the acting national chairman? Who should be the acting national chairman? This is, this is a serious one. At the time, my own understanding is that at the time the court, the, 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 federal, the, the high court in Abuja issued the statement uh, suspending or issued the judgment suspending uh, the chairman, Adam Soshumole, who was acting. And I, and I think uh, we should have gone back to that uh, to begin from uh, that point, the point at which uh, the whole matter went to court and then who was acting at that particular point in time. And then we begin to find a solution. But, 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 but I think, um, in all honesty, uh, you know, this, this thing is beyond just simple uh, arithmetic of uh, who gets what from the court. I, I think it's, uh, it's far deeper than that. And uh, it's more complicated and more serious than looking at it just from the surface. But in, in truth, we should have gone back to where we were at the time the court issued the order. And then from there, we begin to find uh, whatever, we, we, we begin to navigate the process to see if we can get out of it. And like you said, it's just nine days. And within nine days, we, we must find a solution. And, and, and how do you find a solution in a situation where you know, people have become combative about it, people have uh, interests have been entrenched, and very, very powerful voices that are supposed to weigh in have uh, suddenly gone silent. And, and, and the whole thing, it's, uh, it's getting out of hand. Sajo, you know, the, let, let me say this. A lot of us in Nigeria have grown to see. Mr. Sajo, hang on a minute. What you've just said resonates with what uh, Mr. Giadom has said. Going back to that court judgment, is that your train of thought? 
No, what I am saying is that, you see, if you want to navigate a very tough terrain to, 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 to find your way out, it's always good. Uh, any, very, any good Boy Scout will tell you that you are, you are usually advised to go back from the starting point. And the starting point is where you start your journey. You know, when you go back to your starting point, you now take your, your, your coordinates. Let's, let's and, make it simple for the viewers. And you to navigate out of uh, a situation so, where you may from, have uh, lost your... From your perspective, from your starting point, who is on that seat now as acting national chairman? Because somebody's got to preside over the forthcoming primaries. Who would that be from what you've said? From what I am telling you is that whoever was on that seat at the time the case was in court and at the time when Adams Oshimole was uh, suspended by the High Court in Abuja, whoever was on that seat should return to that seat and then from there the party should find its new bearing and navigate through this crisis and solve it immediately and and and, and don't forget that i am saying this because uh, mr Sajo, you know if you look at the objectives of mr. the Sajo, party you they, get they, your they, time they, to they, speak they, on the matter i also need to get the opening comments of uh, mr hassan let him uh, weigh in on this i mean uh, mr hassan well you heard him say look going back to that time help us we, we, we're not uh, politicians to understand some of these things so do you understand what he's saying? Going back to that time, so from you, who should be there? The person that the MWC chose to act on behalf of the chairman is the person that should be there. And let me tell you something, uh, Chamberlain. Uh, uh, in the Conference of Eagles, a vulture can never be a member. Gaidom, as a deputy national secretary, we have a sitting secretary. We have, an NW, we have NWC members, 21 NWC members, that ratified the, 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 the resignation of Gedom when he went to become, when he wanted to become a deputy uh, governor in River State. Uh, I don't think, uh, uh, you see all these things that are happening, uh, Chamberlain, the problem we have in our party is much more bigger than what it is. People have started permutation of 2023 in 2019 and 2020. When will these people give us good governance? We have governors, we have a party that have promised the people of Nigeria good governance. Our, our, our healthcare has deteriorated. Our education is already deteriorating. In fact, it has deteriorated too. Uh, people sleep with hunger. Uh, uh, children below the age of five die on avoidable diseases. Nobody cares about that. People are dying every day on banditry. Nobody cares about that. The governors, all they care of is to come to Abuja and manipulate the party system and now put their own party uh, chairman so as it will suit them in 2023. This is three years to come. When will they give us good governance? You know, and when who you talk says, who said that the court suspended Comrade Adams Oshomole? It never did. His ward chairman, a factional ward chairman, that is Obaseki's man, came out and said they have suspended the, uh, the, the national chairman. Do you know what it takes to, for the chairman to start from suspended until the NWC ratify it, until the NEC ratify his suspension first before he stands suspended? A convention, mind you, brought the national party, uh, the party uh, national chairman. Yeah, but, but Mr. Adam Hassan, Adam as it stands today, the Court of Appeal has upheld the, the initial judgment. And that's why all these meetings are going on. In fact, even the NWC did appoint uh, Jimabi at the time. So if they didn't have, or if that court, are you disregarding that particular court judgment? What's your point on that? Our national chairman has come up yesterday to tell you that, yes, he has stepped aside. He's a law-abiding citizen. He has respected the courts and he has stepped aside. Our former governor, Abiola Ajimobi, is supposed to be acting as the deputy national chairman south. He's not disposable and he's not disposed for now. And 
the person that is supposed to act on his behalf will have a constitution. The constitution said the person that is supposed to act on behalf of the uh, 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 chairman is that person, that vice chairman, that comes from the same zone of the chairman, which happens to be the person the National Working Committee has uh, uh, put there. Uh, Mr. Hassan, just to get you clearly now, you, you were making reference to, you know, the, the eagle and, and, and what have you, but you understand that uh, Mr. Giadom came with an order of the court. I mean, it would have been easier for us if it was just a statement he made himself and said, well, I want to be the, the national acting national chairman. Then we'll say, well, what do you have to back it up? And he has brought forth a court order. So you have your party's constitution on one side, and then you have court orders, which this is one of them. So in the light of that court order, do you still think he's out of place? Uh, that order was an expert order, which has expired, had expired in March. That is one. Secondly, I would like to advise our courts, please. Uh, our courts should not be peddling into political matters. Our parties, our political parties have constitution, and that is why the courts even listen to us. We must have a constitution and take that constitution to INEC before registration. I think our courts should be treating a party uh, issue the way they treat uh, issues in the universities. I will give you an example when I was in school. When I was in university, if a lecturer air and after airing, the Senate will constitute a committee after suspending him. That committee will 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 will, will, will uh, investigate him. And in the course of investigation, if that lecturer goes to court, the court will tell him to go back to the university to finish up the processes of the university before he comes to the courts. I think the courts, our courts in Nigeria should do the same to the political party. We have an internal mechanism to settle issues like that. If you talk about people going to court, Gaidom as it is today, once any one of them takes the party by Article 21 of our constitution, anyone that takes the party to the court stands dismissed, mm. expelled. Right. Nobody needs to ratify it. The NWC doesn't need to do anything. He has been okay. expelled. So Obaseke, uh, the person that took us to court uh, on this matter, all of them have stand, have stand uh, 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 expelled from the party. All right. By Mr. Sajo. Okay. So, Mr. Sajo, do you disagree with any of the points he's made? I think uh, to a large extent, yes, I do. And, and let me tell you why I'm doing so. Is that, uh, you know, democracy has guard, guardrails. Just like you have guardrails on a bridge and that people must, I mean, it, it protects the, 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 the vehicles from veering off the bridge, you also have guardrails of democracy. And one of the key guardrails of democracy is the political party. The political party is not a special purpose vehicle for people to attain power. It is supposed to be an important ingredient and a component of the democratic process. So also is the judiciary. The judiciary is also a guardrail of democracy. Otherwise, impunity will, 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 will reign in the land. So the way I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it from his own takeoff, his takeoff was absolutely right. We, had a lot of, we have a lot of challenges in the country. These challenges have been compounded by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and it, its after effects. If all of these are happening at this point in time, I think crisis within the ruling party is the last thing we expect. And, and, and let me make it very abundantly clear that uh, the president of the country and the governors of the country would want to be focused on uh, you know, uh, getting us to exit from the shocks, aftershocks of the COVID-19 uh, crisis, which affected both our health care and our economic uh, well-being. Beyond that, I want us to accept and I want the party leadership to accept that this crisis is entirely an ill wind that will blow no one good. They, before 2019, there were a lot of crises. And how did we get out of the crisis as a political party? The, the APC had, uh, by then it had 23 governors. By the, uh, by the time we exited 2019 crisis, we have reduced 23 to 19. And if this crisis is not well managed, by the time a dog slips out of our hands, we will go to about 18 states in our hands. So 
we are not gaining. And you cannot continue to, to do something that gives you no benefit and you, 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 you take solace in it. What I want us to focus on is the fact that very voice, the party, the NWC, what we expect them to do at this point in time is to convene a neck meeting. And that neck meeting should sit down and talk about a mid-term convention for the party. Let us even look at all of the crises that we're going through holistically. Let us begin to deconstruct some of the, 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 the difficulties right. we're having. But, in but you know, don't forget that you have, Let don't forget that the party has, it, right, don't forget the party has nine days just to do that. And the question is, can all that be achieved in nine days, in fact, before that, such that you can conduct primaries and get the names to INEC. But let me go back to Mr. Hassan and take him up on something he raised earlier about the order of the court saying that it has expired. How did you come to that conclusion? Expertise, an expertise order has a, has a lifespan. And that lifespan, I think, is about two weeks. And you got that expertise order in March. And we're in July. June, I mean. So that's why I said it has expired. Stated, because I, I wonder how you, you, you came to that. Was it expressly stated or just leaning on the fact that, I mean, it was given in March and you thought, well, we're in June, so it should have expired. So again, think, was it expressly I didn't think stated? Lawyers... Go ahead, please. I didn't think. Lawyers explained this. Uh, okay. Uh, Coyote, I didn't think. Right. He's I mean, because we know that some of these things, you know what lawyers do? They always have different sides to this. Some will say, well, the fact that it came up in March does not mean it has expired. But I mean, this is obviously a, a, an ongoing one. But where we are right now, obviously, is quite tricky for your party, especially because we're looking at the time which is ticking, nine days. I mean, Mr. Giajo says that, well, he thinks that there should be some form of, you know, coming together of the neck. Do you think this can be done in nine days? Do you think this is even the way forward or you feel that your chances of your party in the coming days are smooth? First of all, we can't convey Nick as at now because of the uh, NDDC protocols on COVID-19. COVID uh, uh, there is no way we can call on Nick uh, at this time before uh, the primaries or before the submission of a name to INEC in nine days. So I think uh, 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 the best we can do was what the NWC did yesterday. Uh, uh, 16 members out of 21 have come up and, and, and sought out a solution to this. They have constituted a committee that will go for the primaries in Edo by the weekend. And uh, 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 after then, then we now know how to. Let me tell you, uh, uh, all these things that are happening, uh, our chairman can come back within 24 hours or maybe less. All he needs to do is that since uh, Governor Obaseke has moved, has res resigned from APC with his own people, those were the people that suspended, allegedly suspended our chairman from his ward. His ward chairman, present ward chairman, can bring all the executives together, sign an agreement that they have nulled and voided the, 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 the suspension of the chairman. Mr. Hassan. The, the, the submitted, the executives will sign, all these executives will sign, they will submit it to the NWC, and as soon as the NWC National Working Committee of the party receives that, our chairman becomes, comes back to his office. Mr. Hassan, let me guess, you got that from some lawyers too, right? That is what the Constitution says. That, yeah, that's what uh, the Constitution says. A party, okay. a, a, a ward chairman suspended our national chairman to the local government and state. Then now, the same ward chairman is saying he has voided that uh, 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 suspension and we are recalling our chairman back. Once they recall him back and they, all the executives come together to sign that they have recalled the chairman back and submit to the NWC, nobody needs to ask any lawyer. He is back mm. to his so, office. Mr. Sajo, from the look of things, yes, time is ticking. We all see that. Do you, what's your impression about the uh, disqualification of uh, 
Governor Obaseki, who eventually left the party. Was that in order? No, but uh, Chamberlain, let's, let's put certain things in perspective so that we can be very clear on issues. First and foremost, there is a, a, a voice we are expecting to, 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 to wade in at this point in time. And I think that is the voice of uh, Mr. President. I'm appealing to Mr. President, uh, who is the overall leader of the party, to please uh, lend his voice in, in this crisis. This is a period when silence is definitely not golden. So we, 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 we want to hear from our president. We want our president to wade in. We want our president to take a position in, uh, in resolving this crisis. And secondly, I want to tell you that um, the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown out some other benefits for us as a, as a country. We're just trying to avoid doing what is right. We don't have to convey neck in Abuja any longer. We, if we can hold the Federal Executive Council meeting virtu or by, by virtual means, if we can hold international meetings. Yesterday, the president had a meeting of the Africa-China thing virtually. We can easily convene a NEC meeting virtually with everybody sitting in his state and participating effectively. We can do that. We have moved a step away from what, where, where we were. So to tell me now that it's difficult to convene NEC is to actually say we're not interested in convening NEC. And NEC has a overall you know, supervising uh, authority over the NWC. And the dispute is within the NWC. Then thirdly, and very, very importantly too, that we need to begin to ask ourselves, why are we changing rules midway? At the beginning of uh, the journey, the APC did not, did not just do zoning, but they did micro zoning. When, when a, an officer comes from a particular state, his replacement must come from that state. The very beneficiaries of the micro zoning midway in the journey said, no, they don't want micro zoning. I mean, and it, 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 it begins to, you know, when you change rules midway in the, in the game, you, you create confusion. And let me tell you, very importantly, whether we are suspending a governor or we are allowing a governor to stay or things like that, we must bear in mind that the, we, the members of the ruling elite, are losing the confidence of the people, the trust deficit between the rulership of this country and the followership of this country is getting wider by the day. And all this double speak on our part, all this crisis we, we foment, all this uh, culture of vulture that we have imbibed in our, in our political system, we, we engineer crisis and sit by the side and wait for it to, to, to consume somebody, then we get a carcass to go so and share. It's all, all of these things are actually affecting the polity itself. We that suggests must begin to reconstruct the way for, we, we, from we your submission, our systems, political systems, the way we so relate to... So, Mr. Sajo, from your submission, that suggests that you do not agree with the processes that led to the suspension and disqualification of the governor. That's the impression. Is that right or wrong? It will be... I do not agree with the processes that precipitated this crisis. Because this crisis, like I said, is an ill wind that will definitely, definitely, definitely blow no one any good. Okay, now, if you're asking Mr. President to wade in, wade in... Nigeria wade, have said... Hang on. When you say Mr. President should wade in, wade in from which perspective? The law is clear. Everybody's interpreting the law of your political party. So if you were to intervene and wade in, what portion of the law do you think he will be citing in this circumstance? The, in, the entire process of setting up uh, the APC, uh, it, it's, it's uh, through the law, but the law is based on an understanding between individuals. There, there was a consensus. There were five tendencies that set up the APC. There were the three legacy parties, ANPP, a, a, ACN, and uh, the CPC. There were the splinter group of the PDP called the new PDP, and there was a splinter group of ABGA that came with uh, Rochas or Korocha and his team. So there were about five <coughs> tendencies that came together. Oh, Few Mr. Sajo, are you suggesting the party is about to dis disintegrate? I'm talking about so the, we must uh, though this particular uh, scenario that your party has now. What laws of your party will the president be citing concerning what's going on? Nine days you have to sort this out, from what Eineke said. Nine days. Uh, Chamberlain, you are in Lagos, I'm in Abuja, and we're relating. This is an age of uh, technology. 
With technology, we can hold all our meetings and conclude all our, our crises okay. in, 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 and arrive at a consensus within a day or two. If, he, if my mm -hmm. brother here is telling you that within 24 hours, they could reverse everything that happened in the door state, why can't we reverse everything that happened that precipitated all this right. crisis? Let, let's get him to jump so in right away and respond. Win. Okay, Mr. Hassan, what do you say to that? To, to what, actually? He says, if you say the, press, to, the to, chairman to, of the party can convey, come back in 24 hours, why can't you hold your next meeting and do it in less than, in no time at all? He thinks that can happen. Absolutely, it can. We can do that. We can do that. But I bet you a lot of people will not be involved. Because there are people that are supposed to be neck members and can't find internet in their, in the, in their villages. The members of NEC are, uh, are too, just too much in the state. A few of them can go to the government house and maybe sit in front. In fact, if you go to a lot of states, a lot of states don't have the, 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 the luxury of internet. So what will you say to that? But, go through uh, the, the, the members of the NEC. A lot of them will not even have internet to join uh, in the NEC meeting. It, 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 it sounds like Mr. Sajo is disagreeing vehemently. Go ahead before we go to break, please. Quickly. There is the, the service providers. If you can make a phone call from anywhere in Nigeria, you can have access to the internet from every, anywhere in Nigeria. Please, we should, we should stop begging issues. The truth Gentlemen. is that every, and most of these NEC members who, to, who, who even suggested that they, they live in villages, most of them, we know them. They live right. in the capital cities of their states. They don't live in the villages. But okay. even if uh, they live in the villages... Mr. Sajo, just hang on a minute. We'll, all, we'll come back to both of you when we return in a moment. To just give us your concluding thoughts. Please stay with us. Welcome back. So let's wind down. There's gentlemen, from the look of things now, the primaries in the party have got to hold. Uh, as it stands now, members of the party, even in those states, I'm not sure they know which way to turn. They're waiting for that leadership to be provided by the party so they know where and how do we go. Mr. Sajo, you're making a point. So uh, add to that. Now, how do you suggest the party, because now, Beyond the next meeting, you got there's little or no time to sort all of this out. What should be the quick things that should be done now, other than the next meeting you've suggested? Well, the quick things uh, that uh, we we should begin to to do is first and foremost put our thinking caps on, be, be, begin to be very rational. I have a feeling, and, and, and my brother here alluded to it, I have a feeling that most of the combatants are fighting proxy wars. They, they, this is a battle for 2023, and it's unfortunate. Uh, and we must begin to put our thinking caps you know, on our heads, begin to be rational about it, begin to look at it very dispassionately, and consider the interests of ordinary Nigerians. We have governance to, to handle. We have a president that is of our party that is supposed to uh, make sure that he governs this country very well. We have governors of our party and, and even the governors that are of the other parties. The interests of the Nigerian people should be paramount. So the first thing uh, I expect the, the leadership of the party to do is to revisit the entire process. Like I said, go back to how the crisis started and see if there are missteps that we took and so we can correct them immediately and go ahead. But if we, we fail to do that, the, the, the crisis deepens and then we lose much more than we will gain. And I don't want us to lose much more than we can gain. So we, we, we really want, and, and I still you know, plead with Mr. President, he should wade in. His voice will be very strong, will be, very, will, 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 will be a game changer. He must come in and call all the parties to order. Yes, he is a, he's a Democrat Let that it. respects the supremacy of the party, but he must also begin to believe that it, uh, Let's get the, the, uh, being a Democrat goes beyond just uh, keeping quiet. All right, he, we, we hear you. Let's get Mr. Hassan to equally respond to the same thing. Uh, uh, Chams, I think there is no cause for alarm uh, in a dual elections. Uh, NWC have sat yesterday and they've constituted a committee that will conduct a primary election. After that, 
we'll, uh, there will be an appeal committee and after that we'll go for general elections. So I don't think there is any problem. The problem we have is the alleged suspension of our party chairman and which I believe and I agree with uh, Mr. Madam Ahmed, my leader here, that the president should wade in. The president should wade in and speak to those governors that are trying to destabilize our party and those ministers that are trying to destabilize our party. We don't want our party, the national, to be what we have today uh, in River State. Please, I think the president should wade in and tell them to go back and give governance to the people. We have promised people, we, we, we seek for their uh, 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 suffrages. They gave us their suffrages last year and we have not given them governance. We are back at, uh, 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 fighting permutation for 2023, which is so bad for us. As a ruling party and as a leader of the party, the president should wade in and caution those governors. Adams must go. Adams, yes, Adams will go, but Adams will conduct a due election first. Uh, you say Adams will go. How, how do you mean? Do, do you mean that there are plans maybe in the nearest future to, you know, push him out? Of course, of course, when his time comes, he will go. Right. But not now. Okay. He has, he has elections to conduct. Okay. Uh, you know, also, I realized that while both of you were responding to our questions, it seemed you agree on, on one point that maybe this is just beyond Edo State. It's not just the build up to Edo elections. You talked about 2023. You've talked about proxy wars. He made reference to, you know, people just waiting around in quote as vultures just to, you know, feast on the carcass. So about two years ago, I recall that something similar happened in Benue State and I mean, you lost the state eventually. And the question is, what are the things also moving forward, aside solving this one that seems to be related to Edo, what are the things you think should be done to ensure that this does not blow up, especially because you're planning ahead of 2023? This is why I say the president should come out and speak to those governors that are trying to destabilize the party denied their people governance, come to Abuja and try to destabilize the party. This is why I said the president should speak to them. And he should also speak to those ministers that are wedding in into party activities which they don't need to. I, I, don't, think, I, I don't think that, I, I don't think that is, uh, in fact, you know, what is, what is germane in this is that the leadership of the party must respect the rules that have been set up, the constitution of the party. The constitution of the party is very clear on all of these issues. It is personal interests of some individuals that interpret the constitution the way they like. The conventions that the party had set up over time, the precedences, all of them should be respected. By the time you begin to change what the, the constitution says, you begin to change what the president, what the president of the party is, you begin to change the conventions of running the party, you are, you, 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 you are negating all the fine principles upon which the party has been built. And that is so the leadership, that's exactly what I'm saying. the leadership of the party must begin to respect the laws that establish the party, the conventions that the party had set up over time, the precedences that the party had set up, everybody's opinion must be respected. If he is saying, that have been elected on can you hear me you say you want mr president to weigh in but mr hassan is saying that yes mr president should weigh in and perhaps suggest that mr gedon should please step aside and not cause more confusion what's wrong with that no 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 what we are saying is that the the president should weigh in and ensure that whatever the constitution says whatever the law says whatever decisions are arrived at at a, so, uh, a competent court of law should be adhered to okay, very strictly. Let, let, I'd like both of you to respond to this before we go. What in your position does the law say in this regard? In which regard? In the leadership of the party right now. What's your, what the law says? I, I, I would not change my position. My position is that to navigate through this crisis, we must go back to the status quo until so what the, at law the says. time the court case was instituted. Oh, okay. At the time when the pronouncement was made for the chairman to step aside. And, All right. Mr. Hassan. Nothing, Mr. nothing short of that. What the law says is what our Mr. Hassan, is what the law says and what our constitution says is what the NWC did yesterday. 
Okay, so there you go. Uh, you, it looks as if you're agreeing to disagree on this particular matter. But we do thank both of you for coming on. Uh, our Hassan, a member of the APC, and Mr. Ahmed Saad, your former Commissioner for Information, Adam Awa State, also a member of the APC. So we will be back in just a moment and look at the legal position on this one. Stay with us. Welcome back. Yes, indeed. Uh, just taking a look at what uh, what is the position of the law? I mean, both of them made uh, reference in passing to the party's constitution. But beyond that, the matters are in the several courts in the country who have given several positions. Well, uh, Ayo has since joined us uh, ever since. Uh, <laughs> so there he is. Well, so he's going to go ahead eventually and uh, yeah, come up with what the law says. But he's not the lawyer in house. Well, so don't I can argue. That. I can argue a case. Well, I think if it's a bad matter, he might fall flat on his face. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm his unlearned colleague. <laughs> Mr. Bani, well, he's a legal practitioner, a former second vice president of the MBA. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Well, yes, you've seen and several that's... positions. Well, uh, and then maybe you should start from where Mr. Gerdom uh, brandishing that particular court uh, material or judgment that he has. What is the current position? How relevant is his position citing the judgment he said he has from the court? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chamberlain. I, I think before we uh, go into the last question you just uh, put across, it's better we put this matter in proper historical perspective because the moment you understand the history of this particular case, you can now put uh, the legal perspective in proper uh, understanding for the people. Now, what happened is that what is playing out uh, in uh, APC and then against the Oshomali uh, started somewhere in his world in a circle. Uh, where he was suspended by certain members of that political party, and that suspension was ratified at the local government level and also uh, ratified at the state level. Uh, some members of APC now proceeded to FCT High Court uh, to argue that if he has lost his membership by way of suspension, he cannot remain the chairman of APC. And when that particular suit uh, was initiated, they came by also uh, with an injunction, interlocutory injunction, uh, for him to uh, be restrained from acting as the chairman of APC, since he has lost uh, his position as a member of APC at his, uh, at his state level. Now, that interlocutory application was heard, and the court granted that injunction, restraining uh, Oshemele from acting as the chairman of APC. Now, there are two things. The issue of his suspension by, by his political party at the state level has not been challenged, or if challenged, the court has not invalidated it. Now, when they came over to Abuja, the, now the issue was he cannot act as a chairman of a political party, he's no longer a member because of the suspension. So he was actually restrained. He uh, went on appeal, but before the appeal, he went and obtained an interim order and it's an expected order for a stay of execution. And that is why he got a reprieve and still remained as the chairman of the APC all till uh, uh, two days ago when he was removed by the uh, Court of Appeal. Now, the substantive uh, interlocutory appeal was here two or three days ago, which validated that restraining order that was given by Abuja uh, High Court. That is where we are. As of today, Oshomale is no longer the uh, chairman of APC by virtue of that court of appeal uh, decision that was reached. Now, for Chief Victor, the same day that uh, Oshomale uh, was actually uh, given a reprieve was the same day he went to court in Abu Dhabi in order to get the court to validate him to be the acting chairman because nature of was a vacuum. And in the absence of a chairman of a political party, there must be an acting chairman. And he went to court, and the court uh, gave him that order that he should now stay, uh, uh, become the acting chairman of the APC in the absence of uh, Oshomole, who has now uh, been removed. But that same day was the same uh, day that Oshomole got the reprieve to, for, for stay of execution. So at that time, the issue of uh, Chief Victor remaining as the acting chairman became, uh, uh, was put in abeyance. And that is the position we were until two or three days ago when uh, uh, Oshimole was uh, finally 
actually uh, uh, removed as the chairman by way of that injunction that was given by the uh, high court so, of Abuja. But yesterday, he was saying that, look, yes, it was put in abeyance, but now that the Court of Appeal has upheld that decision, he thinks that that will kick in automatically. But some others argue, look, by friction of time, no, that cannot be the case. What is the position of the law on that? Now, the, now, the, the thing is that the, the, the time he got that order, there was no appeal against that order. Even though they are saying, oh, uh, because it's an ex parte order, he has a timeline. The point is that nobody appealed against that particular order. Now that Oshomole himself, uh, and of course, you know that particular uh, uh, position, was put in abeyance by virtue of the re temporary relief that Oshomole got from the Court of Appeal. Now that Oshomole is no longer the, uh, uh, the chairman of, of APC, what do you think should happen? Did they go to court to ask the court to vacate that order, or did they appeal against it? So it's something that is very dicey, and we have to be very careful with somebody saying that, oh, by virtue of friction of time, the, 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 the judgment of the, of, of the court has, 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 has expired, when there has been no uh, contrary opinion of the court, either at the higher level, or even by the same court that gave that uh, earlier order. So it's important we get that very, uh, very straight. There was no contrary order, either by the appellate option now, exercised by any party against that order that was given, or All right, the but... same court was not approved right. in order to vacate that order. So respond to this point early then. Does the ex party order have a lifespan of two weeks or not? And after that, what happens next? It all depends on the rules of court. I don't know what is applicable with Abuja uh, uh, high court rules. If the rule says he has a timeline, of course, at the expiration of that timeline, it expires. But if the Abuja high court does not have such a rule, then it becomes uh, something that will be speculated for somebody to begin to argue that uh, it has expired. So I don't know what is the rule applicable in Abuja with regards to ex parte uh, orders. You're saying that the value of the validity of an ex parte order depends on the court, not on the judgment. It's not a template. On the rules of court. On the rules of course, sir. Of a particular court. Okay. On now speak to us. Course, speak yeah. to us about you know this. So on the one hand is a judgment, on the other hand is a constitution. The APC is quoting the constitution of the party, and one of the members of the APC is quoting the judgment of a court. Which should take the lead? If there is any subsisting uh, court judgment at any point in time, the law must always follow the constitution. The law must follow the, uh, what has been provided for. Now, if there is an existing court order, you cannot just wake up without any, any validation of that order, and now begin to quote a section of the Constitution that make nonsense of an existing court order. That is the thing, because here in Nigeria, uh, we, we like to disobey court order. The independence of the judiciary has always been compromised. People can stay in their homes and begin to interpret court order, even when there has been uh, no uh, contrary order by a superior court. So I'm saying, if there is an existing order saying that this is the position of the law, and you have not taken any position to invalidate it. You have not taken any position to reverse that order. It will be uh, very uh, uh, wrong for anyone to now begin to quote uh, a, a section of the law, you know, that gives him some level of comfort. So my opinion is, what have you done with order that has been made by the court? Did you appeal that? Even if that order looks very wrong, even if you don't agree with the court order, just like the issue of suspension of uh, Adam Soshimele, in his local and in, the, in his world and at his state level, I don't think he has taken any practical step to even set aside that particular suspension. He's saying that a seven member that just sat down, contrary to majority of members in that world, he has not gone to court, and no court has actually set aside that suspension order. I mean, that suspension listen, that was uh, uh, made by his political party members in his state. He is now assuming that there's only seven members, and because it's seven members, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. That is not how law works. If a court has made a pronouncement, what you need to do is to take a practical step to set it aside. Or somebody has taken a step against you. Mr. That Bani, you just, you just one moment. Yes, just one moment. To, to, just one okay. moment. There is the constitution of the party that has a chairman and has an, uh, uh, about six other maybe deputy chairman or vice chairman of that same political party. And then there are other political, yes. or other, other officers of that same party. At what point That's right. does a deputy national secretary have the right to go to court to seek judgment to become chairman 
of acting chairman of a political party when he's not any of the vice chairman? Very intelligent question. At the time uh, that he went to court, was there any appointment of an acting chairman by the organs of the government? I mean, by the organs of the political party. At the time, constitution. Went to court. One now, moment. There is a constitution. Is the party has a constitution. Mr. Bani, one moment. The party has a constitution that already details the point at which should there be a vacuum in the seat of the chairman, there is an, there is an arrangement in the constitution that says this is how it ought to go. And that's what I'm saying, that if he now rushed to court and got a, 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 a court order, now ask, you know, asking him to be the acting uh, chairman of the political party, contrary to the provisions of the, of the political party, that is, a, you know, a, a, a step has to be taken by the political party to, to nullify the validation of his uh, acting chairmanship by the court. To say, hey, look, there is a provision of the constitution that does not allow somebody who is in the position of acting secretary to rush to court in order for the court to validate him to be the acting chairman. In that sense, of the constitution that says this is what it's supposed to be. So nobody has taken any step actually to invalidate that order that has been made by the court. That is the position. So my fear is that was there any time that particular provision of the law or of the constitution of the political party put in effect that since acting chairman, I mean, since the chairman has been removed, the position is that the deputy uh, 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 chairman of the party now should step in. I think that was a vacuum at the time the acting secretary went to, to court to have the court validate his uh, acting chairmanship position. So in the sense of you going to court to challenge that order, that is my problem, my fear. You cannot now sit down and begin to read the provision of the constitution when there is an existing court order that was either wrongly or rightly obtained. You know, Mr. Albani, I imagine this is exhausting for a lot of people, you know, trying to do the calculation. So at the end of the day, What's the way forward? So let me just ask pointedly because, I mean, the previous segment, that was where we began. So in your opinion, who is the acting national chairman of the APC? As a lawyer and training law, I will tell you that the man that went to court and got the validation of the court order is the person that I think, that I think uh, should be the acting chairman until practical step is taken to actually remove him. Uh, that, that, that is my, that's my own thinking. But for them now to say, oh, the National Working Committee has yesterday appointed Ajimobi, or Ajimobi is incapacitated, somebody else now was. It's a bit conflicting, and it's putting APC in a very bad position legally, especially now that they want to produce a, a, a governor uh, for, for, for the current uh, election that is coming. So I, I, they, they are really in a fix. But I think so, that uh, as the elderly man, the elderly man in that particular program that I watched, you know, suggested, the best thing is for the national, I mean, the, the executive, the, I think next to actually have a virtual meeting and resolve this issue. It's a matter that can be resolved so that they can have a way out. For now, the legal landmines are too many for APC, and the if care is not taken. The coming election, APC may be the big loser. I'm so, just telling you, looking at the landmines, legal landmines that are already laid. Before that happens, they've got a primary to conduct. Now, if uh, Mr. Gedom goes ahead, and conducts the primaries there, is that going to suggest that, well, ever since he went to court, things have, those positions now have people occupying them. Is the party supposed to turn a blind eye to the fact that you have proper people in those positions who are supposed to perform those functions, which he will perform if he goes ahead and does it? As I said earlier, there are several landmines that are really planted in their, on their part, and it's self-inflicted, and I, I don't envy them at, at this point in time. If he goes ahead, well, he, he says he's acting on the, on the order of the call that actually made him to be the acting chairperson. Now, the man that was appointed yesterday, uh, will be saying that it is the National Working Committee that actually uh, appointed in accordance with the provision of the constitution, of, of the internal constitution. So it's going to be, there's still going to be a conflict. There's still going to be a legal issue as, the, as to the candidacy of the person that will emerge, either at the primary or even at the, at the national election that will, uh, that will take just, place. Just quick one. The gubernatorial Legally speaking, yes. I mean, from your legal opinion as well, would it be a good idea for yes. Mr. Basaki to return to the party if they ask him back? I missed all of this. Very funny, very exciting, uh, because what I'm hearing now is that APC said they have not seen his uh, uh, resignation later. Uh, remember, they said so, and he also now said that he has not joined any political party. Uh, anything is possible in Nigeria. I've seen many drama in Nigerian political scene, but this one is the most dramatic. Uh, he has resigned. If he had known that Oshomale would be taken out 
two or three days ago by the Court of Appeal. I'm sure he wouldn't have been in a hurry uh, to resign. So he is in a quagmire. He's in a very big fix. Having openly said he has resigned. But the FPC has said, oh, we have not seen your resignation like that. We have not even accepted it. So he, uh, he may be on his way back. Or he may be on his way out because the, the, the National Working Committee is not making things now easier for him. If there is a consensus evidence that what took place in his screening was not proper, that he should come back. Of course, the man can wear, you know, welcome back to the political party. After all, they say they have not received his uh, resignation letter. And they are the one, it's an internal thing. It's, all right. Uh, uh, Nick is, I mean, uh, I, Nick, I Nick is not involved in this matter now. He can come back. But the point is that the uh, National Working Committee is not making things easier for him. They're still going ahead with the primary. Wow, what, 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 what a scenario. So, it's, it's not going to be it for you. It's not going to be it's the most dramatic uh, scenario I've ever you know, seen in my, my years as a lawyer and as a, as a political scientist. Well, thank you for your thoughts and perspectives there, Mr. Obani. Well, uh, Nollywood, there you have your script for House of Nigerian Cards, if you want to. So we're back in a moment, everyone. Join us again. Well, the NSA, the DSS, the IGB have since visited Katsina State and they met with the governor uh, behind closed doors. And they did eventually tell pressmen that, yes, we intend to do something about that. I think eventually from, from uh, Katsina, they moved to Sokoto as well. So uh, that will continue. But yes, indeed, we're focusing on uh, security issues this morning for this segment. We've got our Honorable Ogena Ego, who is a former member of the House Committee on Local Content and is a member of the ECOWAS Parliament. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. This is a big concern. Uh, all right. Now, this is a matter that uh, members, both in the House of Representatives and in the Senate have voiced concerns about saying, look, something really needs to be done urgently about security. So when they say some of these things, many will all equally tell them, look, they had their chance and still do to contribute largely to us getting the solution. Is that right? Well, um, let me say first that, that I sympathize with those who have lost their life because of lack of effective security in the country. The Constitution is very clear. The first item of the Constitution talks about security of life, you know, and property as the first major aim of, go of government. And uh, to that extent, if the government cannot provide security to its people, the government has failed. I'm not criticizing anybody on this, but if you can have a governor of Casino State, a reputable man who was the former speaker of the house come out to cry that he has failed his people, he cannot provide their security. If you can have the governor of Sokoto State with his experience coming out to say there's only they can do, and the senator representing some part of Sokoto State saying that they are now relying on Niger Republic to provide their security. If you can have governors all over the place in the south uh, all crying out. They cannot provide security. Then we know that there's need to change the security architecture of the country. Now, for many years, we've had only one police structure. Before then, when we started the first republic, every state had their police. Even local government had their police. So policing was very effective. But when Irosi came on, he brought unitary form of government in, and he canceled all the other police and then brought only one type, I mean, one federal police, and that is our undoing. The problem we have in this country, the security problem, is too much. They are not something that only Abuja police can handle. Agreed, they have, the police are everywhere, but it's, it's not possible for them to handle it. In most states today, as we speak, there are security problems. There's kidnapping going on everywhere, robbery. People are being killed everywhere. How do we solve this problem? In my opinion, the best way to solve this problem is to have state police. Some people may argue that, oh, if you have state police, the governors will misuse that police. I want to say that right now, the governors have resources. If they want to misuse any police that is in the state, they can easily use their resources to let that happen. But 
the thing is, we're talking about the security of life of Nigeria. I think that in every state, there should be somebody that is responsible for security. A situation where we blame everything that happened in Zafara, in the Casida, in Sokoto, in Rivers, in Delta, in Lagos, everything that happened, you blame it on the president. It's wrong in terms of security. Every state should be responsible for their security. And that is why the governors are said to be the chief security officer of their state. If a governor is the chief security of his state, yet he has no police force, he has no power of cohesion, he has no way of defending the state, he does not even have a way of collecting the information. Honorable Lego, is wrong. You, the, the National Assembly, members of the House, policy. members of the House inclusive, they had a chance to correct this when they were amending the Constitution. But they, they didn't do that. They failed to do that. So what's the point now? I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. We, we failed woefully in that. But don't forget that we lost that vote with only 24 votes. That is the Eighth Assembly. We lost it with only 24 votes. And I think it is because we have not really explained it to people, you know, to, to the legislature well enough at that time. I'm sure now the governors know what they face. I'm sure they'll be able to call their legislature and say, look, the only way to prevent security in our state is to have state police. When you have state police, the governor and the people in the state, they are in charge. Because they are in charge, they will be able to go everywhere there's a problem. They understand could, could the loose acrony of the state. Well, I'm sorry, let, let me follow up police. on something you said, just to shed more light on that. Police. Pardon me to jump in. You'll continue that thought, hopefully. Well, when you say... That's because they didn't explain to them properly. What does that mean? The members did not read the, the bills or the part that they were voting on? When, when it came in the Eighth Republic, I mean in the Eighth Assembly, the Constitutional Amendment, you know, the issue of state police was one of them. But you, you, at that time, there were still a lot of misgivings. Some people feel that, oh, if there's no state police, you know, uh, there are people who don't have authority over everybody. So people believe that, I mean, uh, if there's a federal police, it's better for the nation. But between then and now, every legislator is not seeing the problem. I'm not sure there's any legislator who will leave Abuja to his state without looking for one form of security or the other. You would rather prefer to fly or go by rail. Even when you go to Kaduna by rail, of course you are secure the rail. But as soon as you come back, from the railway uh, station and going to the town, of course, insecurity comes in. A lot of people have been kidnapped like that. So everybody now knows that there's insecurity. Everybody's afraid to go by road. Because if you do that, you're on your own. Hensmen are everywhere. Criminals are everywhere. Try to cash on it. So I'm sure that legislators are better informed now. Are better informed now. There will still be a federal police like you have FBI in America. You Three can times. imagine in America. Uh, all the rioters are beginning to every... Mm, just pardon me. Yeah, speak, speaking of legislators, I just wanted to quickly put this in. I recall it was about two weeks ago, uh, one of the members of the National Assembly threatened to resign if nothing is done about security in the country. And, you know, it begged the question... If nothing is done by who exactly? I know you have said you don't want to blame anybody, but on whose table is it to do more about security? I agree with you. It is on our table. I have personally sponsored a bill for state secure, for state police. I secure, I, you know, I've, I'm putting a bill for that, which is going for first reading very soon. What I'm saying is that the problem we have now is so enormous in terms of security. No foreigner will want to come and invest in the country or in the state where he knows he cannot travel from the capital to where his investment is by road. How does it go? Is he going to be the airport in all the local government headquarters? It's not possible. So this insecurity is even denying us of investment. It's denying us of improving the life of our people, providing employment for our people. Like I said earlier, in the United States of America, in Britain, in all major countries of the world, you don't have world security. A situation where all security problems are referred to Abuja to the Spanish police is wrong. We are not saying there should not be Nigeria police. They remain. Just like you have FBI in America. You know, you, you have the National Guard. All these represent the police force. 
If are you are planning in the, in the place where the progress? Honorable Lego, are you planning to introduce such a bill to the house? Of course, of, yes, of, of, of state police, yes. I've already, I've, it's, the speaker have signed it. I've already dropped it. It will go for first reading very soon. Because what we are, the bill we are considering right now is on uh, community policy. And it's the same problem. The community policy all will be responsible to the Inspector General of Police. You know, coming from uh, down to uh, that. And the Inspector General, they have too much work in their hand. The police force will must sympathize with them. The job they have in their hand, policing the nation, is too much. You just watch uh, the, the, the commission of police or the IAG talking about Casida State. After those massive riots are going on, this is a state where the president comes from. If he can be affected with social security, then anywhere in the country can be affected. Okay. It shows that. Uh, Honorable, one of the things that I, I believe that will be of concern to you as to everyone else about this state policing would be funding. On the, uh, on the one hand is the issue that many people have talked about, that may, a number of states are not viable on their own economically as we speak. So on the one hand, that challenge is there. On the other hand is that of funding the police. What's your proposition about how those, the, the different uh, state police uh, structures will be funded? The police is quite simple. I can assure you, in every state of this federation, all the DPOs, the vehicles they use, have been donated by the state governments. There is no state government in this federation that have not donated up to 30 or 40 cars to the police force. So in terms of movement, the states are already providing resources. Then, if you go everywhere, in every street you stay, in Lagos or most places, capitals of states, even local government, everybody contributes to security. You hire security, Everybody pays security. You know, it depends on what some call the Bakasi boys, some call them uh, uh, civilian GTF, but some are they are being funded by the people already. So there's nothing wrong. This same money that we are contributing for security that is not able to help anything, this same money cannot be paid to the state. A fund can be created where they'll be paid as security tasks. I'm not sure there's anybody in the country who will pay for security tasks and have sufficient security and will be against it. Everybody's afraid to sleep at night with both eyes closed. So if you are asked to pay a small amount for a fund to provide for state security, of course you will pay it. Let's look at Casino State, for instance. Uh, Over 3,000 people in IDP. All right. Don't, the don't forget that. to feed those people, to relocate them, is more than enough to pay so many police, hmm. enough to pay many uh, policemen. Mm. So what I'm saying is that in every state, banks are being robbed. Look at what happened in Kogi State, where you go there, you kill all the uh, 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 policemen, the, the, all the DPOs, you kill the DPO, you kill all the policemen, and then the robbers, for over two hours, they walk away. It has happened in the just state in so many places. I'm Honorable. sure that the people from those areas, if you say, pay a small amount as stars okay. so that you can have effective policing, of course. Okay. Uh, are you sure that this proposition that you're making is something... Just one moment. Are you sure that this proposition of yours is something that the state governments will be willing to open up to? Remember that we've had cases where some of the governors, even before the arguments about the... During the argument about minimum wage, many of them said they couldn't even afford to pay the previous minimum wage, how much more the one that's, that's come up now. So adding to the, the salaries of their own policemen to their bill, are you sure that many of them will be able to sustain it? Because if they, do, if they, are, if they are unable to, say, to sustain it, it creates even, an even bigger problem for them. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that if the governors come together and look at the pros and cons, they will sustain it. Because the cost of insecurity to government, to the state government, it's far, far more than the cost of, of paying for state police. It's far, far more. Don't forget that a lot of the state governments are already supporting a, a, a civilian, a, a, a civilian a, a, what do you call it, a, a, you know, civilian group of people who provide security. And Bakasi, a lot of the state governments are already supporting it. Most of the state, there's no state governor right now who is not spending money on ensuring that there's security for his people. For instance, Zamfara State, where people are being killed every day. Are you telling me that the governor will say, oh, we are so poor, and they will not do anything? They are spending money 
All right, so just, just before we wind already. down. Do what? Honorable, we need you to say, uh, respond to this, if you will. You, the members in the House, because what re people remember is how the last time this was tried, it failed. What is the thinking now? Uh, have you picked their brains? Do they actually support this? Do you see this seeing the light of day eventually? Well, well, yeah. More people now see the need for state police. They now see the need. So people have tried to confuse people with... Uh, Community policy. Of course, all those wars are the same thing. We make matters worse because all these wars are still being controlled by the Inspector of Police. And they are overwhelmed. So many members have seen it. Although there are still some members who don't still see it. But I'm sure that by the time they give to their own state and they ask their people, if we have state police to be able to provide security for our people, will you, will you prefer it? Everybody will say yes. I'm sure anybody who votes against state police now and there's insecurity in the state, his people will be angry with him. Unlike before, you know, a few years ago, you can travel on road to anywhere, but you go on road now. I remember in those days, we used to come from Lagos to Abuja with night bus. You come to Abuja, you do all the work. In the evening, you enter night bus and you sleep in your bus, luxurious bus, until you get to your destination. How many people can try that now? Everywhere there's insecurity even in your own house. So what I'm saying is that the legislators themselves are seeing the insecurity as it is. Their people are seeing it. I'm sure if the bill of the state police, when it comes as a constitutional amendment, I'm sure that people will look at it favorably. I'll put the bill there, and of course, we will argue the position out of law of the house, and people will look at the pros and cons. Like I said the last time, we voted for state police, but we lost our vote by, by 24 votes, which All was right. very small. Let's see what happens eventually. Now with what is happening right now, we should win well, it. I guess time will tell. We'll see if they put their money where their mouth is. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. And all the best with that, Bill. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be around to speak on this issue of uh, uh, state uh, police. Thank you very all right. much. Well, back in a moment, everyone. To take your comments, stay with us. Welcome back. Well, uh, this first uh, response or feedback comes from Professor Enahena, who says Nigerians deserve proper and better leadership and dividends of democracy premised on growing the economy, provide the enabling environment for businesses to thrive, diversify the economy, and sort out insecurities and grow the middle class. Mm. Thank you, Professor. Well, yes, uh, this next one. Well, touches on the discussion we had earlier on, and uh, it's from Ito Wubakari saying, if it is true that an expert order has a lifespan of 14 days, <laughs> do the days count even when the order was immediately stayed by superior court? It ends by saying the APC needs to thread carefully, I believe he meant thread carefully. Mm. Very, very interesting things one will see on Twitter from time to time. Well, look at the. Do you have one there? <laughs> no, okay. not, not one right now. Uh, there's a, the, a lawyer sent in the message. He's there. It says, the legal effects of abeyance of ex parte order obtained by Victor Gerdom when the Shomole got stay of execution is that once the reprieve obtained by Shomole is set aside, the order obtained by Victor is automatically activated. Time does not run against an order that was put in abeyance. Perhaps that's also validated by this one uh, from Felix Akwa. It says, as a rule, the court sees things through the prism of the law. Mm. In the eyes of the law, Victor Giardom, irrespective of his sin, is the acting national chairman of APC for now, until that ruling is vacated. Do we have some mails, anyone on the screen? Well, uh, there's this mail from, uh, but this one was from yesterday, uh, talking also uh, about the uh, Edo uh, and APC crisis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let's take on Mark Way on that. Oh, well, uh, just seeing it now, looking at this mail, says thanks for your professionalism in, in the interview of Agwanaima. He was trying very hard to satisfy both camps, which is classic stomach politics. To paraphrase, he said, when you're helped, 
Don't Throw Away the Ladder was an attempt to please Oshomale. The performance that he cited was an attempt to be on the good side of Obaseki. I'm glad you caught that, although he never clarified what he meant. He also said uh, Chidoka was all over the place and did not answer the questions. The truth of the matter is that Ize Yamu and Obaseki have played some brilliant politics and are not to blame. All Chairman Oshomale had to do was to endorse Ize Yamu, campaign for him, and let the electorate decide. Instead, he bastardized the system and threw the system into the gutter. What is happening in Edo State is very positive for the country going forward. Why? Because performance is now the criteria for getting the support of the people. I wish the citizens of Kano had taken to the streets with, when their governor was caught taking bribes on video. We'd get there someday. Peace. And that's from Pride or Simon, who is watching from the United States. What about the next one, Baba Jide? Who's got it? Yeah, it says, we're in a country where our solutions have no link to the problems, where the police rely on the strategy of driving around in a convoy of vehicles as a show of force, rather than infiltrating trouble spots where a whole command of the police is following politicians around, carrying their bags, rather than patrolling inner cities where the police top brass are looking to expand their wealth, rather than conducting strategic planning. Wow. So okay. Can you say? There you go. Interesting comments. Please yeah. keep them coming through. We appreciate all of them. Well, that is the show today. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Uso. I'm Kairo Kikyolu. Do have a wonderful day and stay safe. I'm Ayo Makinde. Please be responsible out there. I'm Maofe Ogun Yusuf. Bye-bye.